Our next guest is best known for her role as Angie on the sitcom George Lopez. Now she's starring in a brand new romantic comedy series on Amazon Prime, and we can't wait to hear all about it. Please welcome Constance Marie. fan of yours like you don't understand like obsessed with you so welcome to the show Constance I am so happy to be here I mean I'm sorry that you're not here in real life but I'm very happy to see you anyway <laughs> same now you started acting over 35 years ago but your wow. breakout role was starring as Selena's mom opposite Jennifer Lopez yes. in the hit film <laughs> Selena yes. Okay. <laughs> yes did you think the movie would become this cultural phenomenon that it has not in a million years I mean doing it as this job as an actor as long as I have been you understand that you know the highs and lows and uh, I mean I come from a time when Latino actors Latinx actors couldn't even audition for the roles the Latinx roles that were written yeah. mm -hmm. they would like slap bronzer on Catherine Zeta Jones and yep. oh she's a Mexican for Zorro. Um, I'm still bitter about that. I just want everybody to know I am still bitter. Yes. This is the real. You can, you can okay. keep it real. Keep it real. Yeah, this is, I, I, yes. I am definitely going to keep it real. Hopefully you don't have to edit any of the things that I say. No, we can um, but that's um, so real. Yeah, but on, honestly, um, Selena's dream was to sing in her native tongue, which was English. And it's really sad that it took her death in order for that English album to finally come mm -hmm. out and get the press that it did and the movie wow. of her life. And I feel like we helped Selena achieve her dream. I mean, sadly, mm -hmm. it was after her death, but um, you know, she's, they play that movie all the time and little girls watch it as if it was shot last year. It's yeah. Just, yeah. We want to do amazing. the washing machine, yeah. you know? <laughs> It's a great way to remember her. Yes. You know, it was a great tribute. And you did a fine job. Yeah, you thank did. you so much. Yeah, you were amazing. My Sarah. <gasps> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we loved you in that, obviously, but we also loved you in George Lopez, where you yes. also played a mom. Do you ever feel like you're typecasted in that kind of role? Yeah. And you know what? I don't care. Pay me. I will play That's whoever. I I'll play your mother and your mother <laughs> and any yeah. mother yeah. here. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's so funny. Even before I was a mom, people used to say, oh my God, you're going to play, you're going to be such a great mom. And I would think, how do you know? And it's because I'm bossy and I have a lot of attention to detail. And apparently those are mothering skills. Not only do you act, you do some very important work. You're the spokesperson for the East Los Angeles Women's Center, yes. which helped women deal with rape, domestic violence, and human trafficking. Yes. Tell us about the work. Well, I became aware of them, unfortunately, because they helped a friend of mine. And they are, they established the first 24 7 rape hotline, bilingual oh. rape hotline in 1976. Oh, wow. Wow. That's and it's still going. And um, they help people all the way from the first call to therapy, the medical rehabilitation, finding a new home. I mean, and they're very protective of their people. And I know we all support tons of charities and things, but I've actually been there. I see the women, I see the help, I see their families, mm -hmm. you know, and they do such good. So anything I can do to spread the word for them. Thank you for doing that. That's yeah. beautiful. Definitely. That's incredible. Another thing that you've been really helpful with is you've been really vocal. Like you just started right now saying that there are not a lot of Latinx roles, but there mm -hmm. also is a huge underrepresentation of Latinx projects in Hollywood. Right. What would you like to see happen to address this issue? Well, I think it starts at the top, mm. and I think you need a lot more Latinx executives, heads yes. of studios, and that's kind of how it goes down. And um, because there's so many projects I've seen, I've heard, I know of that don't get greenlit. They mm. don't, they just sort of think, um, oh, it's not going to appeal to a broader audience. Mm. Nobody's going to like it. And it's like, have you not seen Selena? Have you not seen exactly. the George Lopez right. show? Right. And it's the color everybody recognizes, which is green. Right? That's, yeah. It makes money. And we, my people, spend way more money on Preach. entertainment and movies and, and doing things like that. So I think the ball is rolling. It's moving forward. But there's always more room. I, I would love it to be 
someday there's an even playing field. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? So the best actor for the role gets the job. I mean, I became friends with an Asian American actress friend of mine because we were always the creative casting. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it would be Ooh. presumed, it's at a time when it was presumed all the roles were written for white people. Yeah. And then if they wanted to be, you know, creative, they would audition an Asian woman mm -hmm. or a Latin woman. And if we were really good, they might think about changing it. Wow. You know, which is, at least we had the opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Um, sadly, it did not get changed as often, yeah, yeah as I would like crazy. it to be. Yeah, especially that's during insane. pilot season. Oh, yeah. They give, they give it all, and then like around April, March, they're like, okay, we're gonna see the other people. <laughs> <laughs> See the other, the other ones. Now that we've got a white cast, we'd like to sprinkle in a little something. Get Who creative. Who's gonna work the front desk? We need somebody of color at the front desk. Uh, I know. Where's your coffee? <laughs> <All right. laughs>